Good morning world, wake me up from that misery. <laughs> it is now 5.30 in the morning. It is so bright outside. Like I, I feel that my body is still like tired, but on the other side, I have too much pain just trying to sleep more. And it's also a good thing that I'm awake now because it makes sense, easier driving, not as much traffic and also hopefully an earlier arrival time. So how was my night? Well, first of all, the thing that you might be interested in regarding my car, how much battery did I use? I was surprised how much I used actually this time because I came here with 72% or like I started camp mode with 72% and now I have 60%. So I lost 12% of battery over the last seven hours and I'm really really curious because last time when I had the demo car and I was camping I definitely used less than 12% I think it was less than 12% you can check out the video yourself up there but I think I had the wrong AC settings this time because I think I have the feeling that last time I have not turned on the fan on the back seat only the one at the front and now I had both on, so I guess that this could be the case, but I'm not 100% sure. I will see on the way back, when I go back from Germany to Sweden, if this was the case. And then I will repeat the situation. Of course, we don't know, the temperature might change. Currently we have 16 degrees apparently outside, which is pretty good. I had the settings in here for 20 degrees. There's one thing that I'm always scared about. I don't know if you can see it. And I also don't know if you get the feeling, but there, in my opinion, that is the most scariest thing I woke up to this morning. Because yesterday when I parked the car here, the thing was turned to the other direction. And now it feels like it's going directly under me, even though I have not fully parked under it. Crazy. <laughs> okay, so I will now put some clothes on. Then I will show you a bit more of the spot before I start driving. But I still want to show you my sleeping situation and it was really bad. Like if I would have had more of this packaging stuff that I basically took away from the garbage at work, I think it would have been not too bad. But now because I did not have it, it was especially a killer for my, my hip. First, we have this blanket right here. That was the blanket that I was using. This here, the blanket that I usually have um, at home was my mattress. And under that, I had these four little thingies. There's one down there. I had four of these and I was basically laying on them and they really made it soft. The problem is just that I would have like needed a second row. Like it just would have put them there and then put them here, you know what I mean? I think it would have worked so much better if I would have done it like this, but then I wouldn't have the full row like right now. I only had those four pieces. And still, I'm very happy that I took them along. And on my head, I just grabbed my jacket and I put my little pillow on there. And that was also okay. It's really like the hip part. So here somewhere, when I turned around, so that was unfortunately not the best thing but it worked for one day and i think on the way back or i hope on the way back that i have my air mattress which makes it more comfortable but one thing that i can already say compared to my demo drive where i had the couch cushions is definitely the height thing because now it was not as high so i didn't have too much problems with this with this thing right here it is still kind of annoying when you like turn around and you hit your knee up there but it's not the problem that my hip is connecting with this anymore so that's okay but now let's get some clothes on good morning now also from the outside so this was the camping spot for tonight a very very huge area where we definitely have a lot of space but also a lot of noise right now from that little fella i have to say it's so creepy and then on the other side we have another one hiding there 
but this is the noise that I hear in the car. Like I was wondering what is this repetitive sound that felt kind of like the heat pump. I don't know why I think this is so weird, but maybe you get the same feeling that when this thing rotates, it just looks so weird. <laughs> and then you have the other one. Now you can also see, uh, yeah, basically like the, the whole thing hiding in the fog. And that is the road that I have to drive back now. And then that goes down to the main street somewhere. But still, I think that was a pretty cool camping spot. Now it's time to get back in the car, figure out where I will be going next. Maybe I will take a short charging session like in 10, 15 minutes because there's a charger and I will just grab a bite for breakfast. Or if I continue driving, I don't know, for already two hours, we will see what I'm doing. So let's figure that out in the car. I have reached a moment that I have already heard some things about from other people, other users. The Tesla navigation is just doing weird things. So I will show you. I've basically now put the road to my hometown in Germany. And as you can see, it tells me to go here to Helsingborg. And then what is that? Why does it give me a charging spot here instead of finding something there? Because look, there's so many chargers on the road. Why is it doing this? I don't understand that at all. And then it is going around Berlin instead of going through Hamburg and Hanover, Magdeburg. This road is usually the one that I would be taking. I don't know why it's going through Berlin. And it also is not the smartest move for tonight because we have the European Football Cup final in Berlin. So you never know how the roads are there. Because it's doing those weird things, it's telling me that I will be arriving at home at 11 at night. And if I know, check the other thing that i'm using for navigation which is the app called a better road planner i don't know if you know this app but i think it's just a good other yeah app for comparison this one is pretty damn good with finding chargers and also giving me realistic options and also more options than the tesla can offer me as of right now so I will definitely follow what the app is telling me instead of what my car is telling me. I will figure out what I'm doing, but now you guys at least saw that the Tesla navigation is definitely kind of weird in this case. And I trust the app a bit more right now. But I hear that there's supposed to be an update of the whole navigation coming. But as you know from Tesla, when they say features are coming, it could be next week, it could be next year or maybe yeah, in an unknown time. But it's not a problem for me. Like I really don't complain because we have the option of using a phone to compare. So that's totally fine. It's just weird that the car is doing such things. Okay guys, so I have now driven like 15, 20 minutes away from the camp spot to my opinion, one of the most interesting supercharger spots in Sweden. I'm parking right here. We have some kind of toilet house there. Superchargers there as well. However, this supercharger is located next to a hotel that has access to a sauna, a lake. I will just take a few minutes to show you around. So that's the hotel. We will walk there and maybe also I will just grab something to eat because it's my breakfast now. That's why I actually am here. I don't need to charge, but I want to eat something. I want to get ready for the day and then yeah, go on for the first long drive of the day. Okay, so one of the cool things that you can yeah, just at least do right here is you can look at this old remnant of a castle or tower something like this there you have like a small island where you can like do one lap and then i think you have already done 20 30 minutes of waiting it's really not that big you have like a small little bridge up here you can go there unfortunately it's not really that interesting at this uh, castle remnant thing but it's still like if you've never been here for the first time, it's a nice supercharger because you can discover things. The, the thing that I'm doing in Sweden all the time, so when I have the chance to discover stuff while supercharging, it's amazing. Of course, when you are always using the same supercharger, you will reach a point where you are like, okay, I know everything, I have seen everything. Maybe it's not as nice anymore, but still, I think this is a really, really cool and quiet location and also this hotel. So I 
actually went on this island now to show you that right there on the other side you have the hotel and I don't know if you can see it like right there at front on the water you actually have a sauna or I think even two saunas access to the water in my opinion it looks relaxing I would book this hotel to be honest because if you really want to yeah hang out here go here but my opinion is like you don't need hotels to have a great time at the lake because there are so many lakes in Sweden there are so many possibilities to yeah, find spots that no one else maybe has found before you. And that's what I like. Finding something where you have this feeling of, okay, I have found something that maybe not 99% of the whole world knows. This spot is on Google Maps. So of course people will find it. But if you find something that is not on Google Maps, good job. Then you have found a spot that is probably very good and you will not be bothered by too many people because we are on the island right now just i just wanted to give you a short close-up of this little stone construction remnant but we have a big tree up front so we have to maneuver through it ugh, ugh, wet but there we are and there it is and yes you can go also on top of it but it's not too interesting in my opinion and there again you have the view looks pretty cool so now let's go back to the hotel i will show you yeah, just a few seconds what it's looking up there because when you drive here with your tesla you're thinking like wait is this the right access is this the right street it really looks like a fancy hotel entrance but it is supposed to be like that and i still don't know but i think that the hotel actually made the deal with Tesla to build the supercharger here to not only get the people to this um, stone construction but also maybe to the hotel. Smart idea in my opinion. Okay guys, I will not talk too much right now because it's still before 7 a.m. and it's a Sunday and I don't want to bother too many people that stay in the hotel. So yeah, but down there you have the way to the sauna and everything really nice here i think you have like the what is it the the food room i don't know where you have like breakfast and everything in the building and there you have like the huge parking lot with the circle in the middle and somewhere back there like behind those cars is the way out i think and also there so you have two ways two ways out and I really think it looks nice. Like you have many, many ways to get out of this, out of this nice little hotel. So yeah, I don't know, I like it. So you have a lot of different buildings. I think you can actually sleep in each of them. And that's the main building. So what do you guys think about this spot? I think I like it. Of course, I don't know how the rooms look, but in the end, a hotel room is, in my opinion, the place where you should stay the least amount of time because you are at a different location. You want to do things there. In this case, use the sauna, take a swim, discover the area, but not chill in your apartment. So now let's get back to the charger and then, yeah. We will see how far we make it, but we definitely have already charged way too much. <laughs> but it's a good thing because, you know, you can never charge too much. <laughs> One thing that I can say though, I have already um, eaten my breakfast on the way to the island. I ate something where I thought like, oh, it looks healthy because I bought it yesterday at the first supercharging station. I thought like, oh yeah, it looks healthy. I put some cheese on it. And then when I ate it, I realized that there are raisins in there. And I was like, whoa, first of all, I hate raisins. I really, really hate them. And then this combination of sweet with the cheese, not good at all. But wait, I will show you what I mean. And then, yeah, we continue driving. Wait, do we have one more? Yeah. So what I mean is this here. I don't know, I for totally forgot the name of that right now. I'm, it's too early in the morning but there are raisins in there. Would you have guessed that there are raisins in that thing? Not me. Now, enough said, I will 
grab an apple maybe maybe i eat it on the way maybe I eat it on the next station and i also still have a a bell pepper with me oh wait there was something else i want to grab but yeah talk to you later I have made it to Denmark and well actually it would be a good thing because I was driving over the bridge and it looked really really cool however I don't have any internet connection I think there was one setting that I totally forgot to change so now the question is how do I change it because to change the setting I need to go to the website and I don't have internet so I need basically a hotspot or a wi-fi Maybe I have to look for a Burger King or whatever and then do it there. But for now, yeah, it's basically going back to the car. And luckily, the car has internet, so that's good. Okay guys, I have made it to the last supercharger before Germany and now it's becoming tricky, I would say, because now we're gonna have a lot of traffic, especially around Hamburg. I have now decided to basically go here after Hamburg, charge there, the car says 25 minutes and then down here, close to Magdeburg. And then I will charge down here next to Jena. Jena is actually also the town where I studied. So somewhere there as a charger. And then I drive to my family. So three hours of driving is next. We will see how Hamburg goes. And I will talk to you after Hamburg. Hopefully not in a traffic jam before Hamburg. Okay guys, I am at the next charger. The trip through Hamburg was crazy because there were two ways. Either take the autobahn around Hamburg or go through the city. And in the end, I decided to go through the city because first of all, the navigation told me to do so. And second of all, already the way into the city, I saw the traffic jam through the whole tunnel around Hamburg. I really don't like driving through big cities, but with this car, it was so easy because first of all, it's like automatic. So you don't have to shift gears, which is really nice when you have like a lot of stop and go, stop and go. And second of all, it is accelerating fast. So you can also like make lane shifts very quickly when you miss a turn. So it was not as bad as I expected. Right now I am at a place where you have like a ski resort. So you have an indoor place where there is like snow in it and you can ski down there and then you have like a hotel. It's already 5 p.m. I still have another charger that I want to do and then the final charger. And my prediction is that I will be at home at around 11 p.m. and now it's 5 so it's another 6 hours. So let's get going LJ. I think I will finish that later. Okay guys, you can see the sunset behind me. The sun is set. Right there is the last charger of the trip. Wow! 2000 kilometers I have driven and I have actually some complaints to make about certain things in the car so one thing that basically has now started bothering me since i'm in germany but it's not always there but however i have heard from this weird thing and this is the blinking button like the signal button it does not fully work when i want to place the right signal i just cannot click it it's like resisting to the left it always works i had never any problems with that but on the right one you just like i click on it and sometimes i have to click twice three times until it works and i have no idea why but i have heard from other people that in their case the button gets stuck but it's not even a button that's the thing it's like some haptic thing like on your iphone that's like vibrating but not a real button anymore i will of course keep an eye on that right now i'm also planning at least with friends to go test drive Tesla so because they have never driven one and I wanted to give them the opportunity to also drive a faster one if they have the chance and when I'm with them there at the Tesla service center I will definitely ask them if they have any easy fix for it or if the only solution is changing the steering wheel but I will not do it here I will most likely do it in Sweden or even after my Norway trip 
but we have we will have to see it's like three more weeks so could could get worse could only be a weirdness that happens like once or twice but that's the most annoying thing to be honest then the other thing that kind of <laughs> is confusing that's already what i showed you is the navigation that just sometimes does really weird things it's not like that this is a problem for me because as i already said i use this app so i navigate myself basically from charger to charger and just double check i'm not placing the final destination in and just let the car do its thing not as of right now and one thing that i definitely want to have also in the future is that you can place the option how much percentage do you want to have at the end when you arrive at your destination that is something that i really want of course you can plan it yourself like i am doing right now but it would be nice to have the option to select something and then maybe it plans also the closest charger and what else the wipers so what can i tell you about the wipers now after 2000 kilometers of driving most of the time i have to say they work however they don't work when you drive slow of course i know how the tesla dances to rain which is basically like when raindrops are in front of the camera but because if you're driving slow the rain does not really go over the camera like due to the air resistance and the raindrops are too small so it doesn't really work but if you're driving fast it is working most of the time of course there are sometimes like times where you say like okay now it would be nice to clean the windshield but it's it's not a big problem <laughs> what is the problem however is that there's so many people here looking at me that are chilling at the mcdonald's there <laughs> it's kind of weird but because i'm talking english they probably think like i'm not even from here so that's okay that is always the trick always talk a language that's not the mother tongue in the in the country you're in what else can i tell you is there even anything left yes one last thing i'm tired that, that's why i'm also outside right now doing this video to get some air in it's only like 40 minutes of driving left so it's not too bad i have listened to so many podcasts i have listened to so much music and i'm really like it's time now to do something else but it's not working unfortunately because i still have to drive those 40 minutes but yeah i'm happy to not listen to anything <laughs> tomorrow and not sitting in the car because like i actually can feel my elbows kind of like because i always put my elbows on something when i hold the steering wheel when the autopilot is activated and yes yeah, so the autopilot ah <sighs> what do i say i would say most of the times it works especially of course when you have clear markings you don't have any cars too close to you but sometimes it always knocks you off especially when you don't expect it for example i had one situation where a car was like on the entrance ramp to the autobahn and because you have like this curve towards the road the, my car saw the car coming like this before it turned this then my car did phantom brakes so i did not expect it because i thought the car was already turning before i had the feeling that the car would break but nope it still decided to break what do you guys think would you say it is better if the car always breaks even if nothing is happening instead of maybe taking the risk that it is not breaking when something would happen in such a situation for example the car on the entrance ramp loses control and drifts on the road i don't know and now i probably forgot a lot of things one thing that i can tell you and also show us actually my average consumption of course i'm not fully at home yet and i will make a more detailed video i guess but my average consumption is there you can see it it is the sweri tuskland so sweden germany it is this one 2092 kilometers actually i forgot the first 15 20 kilometers but i have an i have used the total energy of 276 kilowatt hours and my average is 13.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers so it is definitely higher than my lifetime and i have to say that the way now in germany was actually pretty good so if we look at the last 50 kilometers ah, okay <laughs> i wanted to say it looks pretty good now i look at the average of the last 50 kilometers and it's 13.9 still um, i had the feeling that most of the time if you don't have any trucks or something in front of you that you have to pass the consumption is between 12 and 13 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers sometimes even lower but i was also now driving 110 kilometers per hour on the autobahn all the time and when i was of course like passing cars i also drove a bit faster so like 120 but i still think this is a really really good efficiency in my opinion 
and I'm still very happy with the car. Of course, like I said, this button thing is the thing that might could bother me the most because it is really dangerous. When you're like trying to pass and then you're clicking the button and you're thinking like, oh, did I miss the button? No, you didn't miss it. It was just not reacting. With that said, let's take another look at the car. I have killed a lot of <laughs> flies, unfortunately. I was not expecting it. But luckily we had a lot of rain so that most of it got actually cleaned away. Yeah, well, now nah, there's one big one in the front. Like right there, there's, there's one big one. But besides that, it looks pretty good. And also there from the side. Just look at it, nice, nice, nice. And with that now shown, this is the end of my Tesla trip to Germany. What will happen the next days? I don't know, because I will hang out a lot with friends. Do I have time to make videos there? Depends if I feel like recording things. Second of all, do I have time to cut videos? No idea, <laughs> but you will see when this video is coming out, a lot of reactions came through. I have pre-recorded some things till Wednesday, if I'm right. So I hope I have some time to not mess up. And thanks for watching this journey with me on my way back to Sweden. It will actually be really interesting because I have a lot of things in the car, so more weight. And I'm really curious how this will affect with the efficiency when I have more weight and if it really makes a great difference. But now I'm talking again way too much. I'm not good at ending videos. So I hope you had a wonderful day and we're going to see each other in the next video. Bye bye.